it's been three years since Denmark reopened its embassy here in the Philippines after closing in 2002 due to financial reasons. And it's making up for that 12-year absence. To learn more about how Denmark and the Philippines are revitalizing ties, I checked in with Danish Ambassador Jan Tap Christensen and his wife, Dr. Q Fong, for some food diplomacy. So now I'm here at the Danish residence to meet the Danish ambassador, Jan Top Christensen, and his wife, Dr. Q Fung. Come on. Hi. Hello, hello. May Welcome. we come in? Yes. Good thank to see you. Thank you so you. much. Thanks thank you for, for coming. Us. Yeah, yeah, thank you Welcome. so much. Good to meet you both. I have an affinity for Danish culture because I studied there very briefly. I've heard about that. Yes. So I'm looking forward to trying your food and learning more about our relationship. Okay, so okay. can you give us a quick tour? Absolutely. Our virtual trip to Denmark, often ranked the happiest country in the world, starts at, well, the happiest place at home, the kitchen. We have two Danish chefs. I'm Leo. I'm Mr. Arnsen. And this is Peter Andersen. So what have you prepared for us today? Well, something very Danish, which is, of course, the open uh, Danish sandwich. We have the pickled herring, which is a very, very, very Danish one. And we have a smoked salmon. Uh, we have a Danish version of fish cake. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have the one we call shooting star, which is a masterpiece in Danish open sandwich. Contains uh, a steamed and a fried fish, uh, prawns and caviar, basically the best of the best. Mm -hmm. We have a roast beef, uh, also with a lot of interesting condiments. You can say it's all in the details here because there's many, many ingredients on, on each and every one. So it, it brings together a lot of interesting flavors. It looks like it. And Ambassador, you know, where did this open face sandwich idea come from? Why is it so intrinsic in uh, yeah. Danish culture? I don't know the history of that, but I know that I grew up with open sandwiches. And I would express the rye bread. And that's uh, homemade, I think the US made that. So I grew up with this. I had it eaten every day. I had it, if I was at school, I had it in my lunch bucket, as a smurble, as we call it. Okay, let me try to pronounce yeah. that. Um, smurble. Very good. Is it? Yeah. I tried my best. And actually, I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to study, I studied a long time ago yeah. in Denmark. And of course, fish plays a big part in the culture. Right? Oh. Um, I, ha I don't know about the herring, but I know that it depends on how it's prepared. All the marinade is a secret recipe of generation. So you will, you will never know the recipe. So if you have to make your own herring, you have to make your own spice. So it's okay, their own recipe. I would say, I mean, can allow, I love a lot, I eat a lot, but I find it in the restaurant. Uh, it's also marinated fresh fish, so, so that makes reminds me a little bit about Denmark when I eat Kenilaudia. Because you yeah. don't really find that in many places, the, our kind of herring. And Denmark is a fishing nation, we export fish uh, to southern Europe. Every day you have big trucks going 2,000 kilometers south through Germany oh. and Switzerland to Italy, where we sell a lot of fish. And we can't forget this very I important part of the meal. <laughs> yeah, very important, especially uh, together with the herring. You yes. never uh, eat herring, uh, at least in a more uh, festive situation, without having the schnapps. Skål! Skål! Ooh. So now, Ambassador, is the fun part. We get to go to the dining room and get to yeah. eat yes. and talk about Danish-Philippines bilateral relations. Is there a proper way to eat this, Ambassador? I'm going to use a fork and knife. Okay, definitely, because, you know, in Danish yeah. culture, we are proper. I, yeah, and I would say the what I used for lunchbox in school, that was a simple version. and. You would use your hand. Mm, okay. But you know, how do you hold it if there's no top bread? How do you prevent your hands from getting side. messy? On the side. Clever. Yeah. Our viewers, people who may who may not have traveled to Denmark, you know, maybe they'll only know Lego yeah. or uh, Vikings mm -hmm. or some of these references that are, you know, of course they're part of the culture, but there's more to it to the Danish culture, right? Can you tell us a little bit about um, 
what we, I guess we should know more about. When I asked the question to many young people in Sweden, I said, I say Denmark, what do you say? Blank eyes. <laughs> no, they don't even say Viking. <laughs> no, I said, so what is the capital? They start coughing. And really? Wow. But at first, on, on the cultural side, just a few things we have been doing. Uh, one thing is the, the, the film festivals now. We have um, also had, last year we had a very interesting uh, uh, girls choir coming here, engaging oh. with local choirs. Uh, they were hosted by uh, uh, Hail Mary, the Queen's uh, children's choir. Mm -hmm. Very fantastic choir. And now this choir will be going to Denmark next year. So we're trying to do more uh, long-term sustainable relations between the two uh, people. We are trying to do as much as possible and I want to mention one cultural thing that uh, is my baby because it's linking the two nations up. Uh, your national hero par excellence, that's José mm -hmm. And our, We don't have any hero at that level I would say, mm -hmm. but we have one we, we cherish a lot, that's Hans Christian Andersen. Oh yes. With the fairy tales. And what did happen in uh, 1886 when uh, José Rizal was traveling around in Germany? He saw a book with Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales, probably in German. And, you know, he also spoke German, yeah. or Spanish, or French, or whatever. So he's a multi talent. So he chose to translate into Tagalog five of the fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen. And what we're doing now is that we're taking these five old fairy tales. This will be a book coming out on uh, we're cooperating with Anvil Publishing House. Probably targeting much, 250 pages, and uh, I can show you the uh, beautiful uh, ah. cover of the book that is already ready for the book. So you said this is in March, we're being released. Right. This is Hans Christian Andersen, Positive Isal, from Denmark to the Philippines. Wow, that's amazing. This, this is really my, my, Your my baby. Pet, my baby. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that really epitomizes yeah. the closeness of the two countries. It does. It does. So a lot of efforts on the culture exchange, but like you said, more than 70 years of bilateral relations. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but then you said there was that period, right, where there was no... 12 MC years, year. 2002 to 14. So was it difficult to get it back and uh, build the... You know, no, it was, uh, has been great fun. It's been very uh, inspiring. Also because, as I explained to you, that I have been working here 30 years ago mm -hmm. uh, for United Nations. So coming back to the Philippines, uh, very close to my heart. Why is the relationship so strong and has so much history when the communities are generally small? Like there's not very many Danish here. No. Um, there's not very many Filipinos in Denmark. What I get from the Philippine authorities, some 1,200 uh, Danes live permanently here. Mm -hmm. And of course you have the business people uh, in Metro Manila, but then you find uh, actually scattered all over uh, the, the islands. Uh, you also have Danes only mainly I, I guess most often with their Filipino wives, small resorts here and there in Nido, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Mindanao. Like running a tourism, like yeah. in the tourism industry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In Denmark, we have some 10,000 Filipinos living in. Wow, that's a lot. Don't, don't forget that. Also. Which industries are they in? Are they, they seafaring? Are, uh, yeah, I'm not counting them in because they're not living in Denmark. Okay. On top of the, those living, you have some 6,000. Filipinos on Danish ships because they know that the presence is necessary to make sure that they get the right people for their ships. So this is very important. And both on the Fair Islands and in Greenland, you have Filipinos living there. What are some other industries that... I mean, I can give you some very uh, good examples where you say, oh, this is Danish. Mm -hmm. Take the, uh, the biggest windmill park in the Philippines, okay. in Burgos. Where is it? Burgos, really? up north at like my name. Ilo, Ilo north. Yeah. Then you have the, you have uh, within food, I mean, you have Carlsberg, uh, you have um, Arla, the dairy company. Okay. Is, uh, today, the biggest dairy company in Europe. Okay. You even find that on, on the airplane. You actually import a lot of meat from Denmark, mm -hmm. either processed uh, meat or, or frozen meat. Of course, it will not have it fresh coming here, but a lot and increasing. Uh, so, uh, you have uh, the pharmaceutical industry, you have well-known uh, brands, Novo Nordisk. But you know the medication oh. Ciprelex, one of the most sold uh, antidepressants in the world, because it has uh -huh. very little side effect. 
and uh, memantin, which is one of the major, uh, you know, anti-dementia medication. Uh -huh. They're all Danish. Yeah. This is oh, wow, I did not notice. Yeah. Well, I should say fashion. Uh -huh. I mean, let me uh, mention... Uh, um, which one's Danish? Vera Moda. And that started here. Yeah. And I, I, I believe with a visit of Ben Chen in Denmark, oh. it seems as if more would be coming. Interesting. I mean, he's uh, evidently someone that is fascinated by Danish quality and design. Um, also, furniture also furniture. is well known, furniture. yeah. Today you have five to six uh, Danish uh, chains of uh, furniture here. Yeah. One thing is very popular, Pandora. Do you have? Mm. Pandora? You have this jewelry. Danish. Mm. Yeah. Pandora jewelry. Obviously a Danish. long line in front of the shops. People love well, it here in Asia. Well, a designing company. Uh, ben Rolfs uh, is trying to engage seriously with, now with the Philippines mm -hmm. because what he sees and what I also see big time has a lot of talent in the, in the Philippines. I mean, young people that can do interesting stuff with different kinds of materials. Right. And I forgot to mention when you mentioned Lego, uh, Lego headquarters is in Denmark. We are not really producing uh, Lego bricks in Denmark, but they design in the headquarters. And it's very interesting to, to know that you have six, eight Filipino designers sitting, mm -hmm. designing you Lego. When are you bringing Lego land to the Philippines? <laughs> That's what we need here <laughs> for our kids. I think it would be very popular. We will actually do that next uh, in December, in, in January, because a very interesting thing was launched uh, one month ago. Uh, in, together with uh, Intramuros, the administrator of uh, Intramuros, uh -huh. and uh, uh, the uh, importer of uh, Lego uh, for Education, a co company here called Felta, mm -hmm. launched a competition among engineering and architect school using Lego bricks mm -hmm. to build iconic buildings. Well, it sounds like you've been busy, Ambassador. What are you not doing? <laughs> <laughs> so you have a lot of companies here, you have a lot of the trade, um, you have the food and the cultural exchanges. What, what else is there? What else are you working on? I mean, given the high growth rate you have in this country, it's uh, now almost 7%. Mm -hmm. You have more and more people coming to the middle class. They would ask for safer products, better products, better design and so forth. And that's where we can come in with uh, our products. We cannot compete with uh, uh, cheap mass-produced yeah. products. That's not our uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. We also see that the, the Duterte government is gradually trying to change this. I mean, you have a government that's stating they want to open the economy more than it has been opened, and oh. we, of course, we are very much in favor of that. But I do have to ask you this because you know there's so much discussion uh, about human rights and the EU and all of this, and obviously De Denmark is known for its rule of law, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. you know people emulate it. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a, an example of yeah. uh, democracy and uh, human rights yeah. and this, yeah. this democratic ideals. Yeah. Uh, so is, is the tide turning here, is that a concern? Because you know a lot of people are talking about it moving away from the focus of democracy. I think we have to be very nuanced when we look at the Philippines. And, uh, first and foremost, we have to respect the sovereignty of, of this country and the government. They're the ones deciding what happens here. Don't forget human rights. That's uh, political rights, civil rights, social rights, economic rights. If you look at this in a broad context, you actually have a lot of positive things happening here. I just mentioned a few things. Uh, reproductive health reform, or the, the executive order by the president that came out earlier this year. We are very much in favor of that. We have been fighting uh, against these restrictions on uh, modern family planning. Freedom information, so people have access to see what's happening in the government offices. And Denmark is a very uh, transparent uh, country. We come out as number one, the least corrupt country in the mm -hmm. world uh, over the last many years. And that's because the citizens have access to information of what, what are you actually doing, what are you doing with our money. I pay approximately 50% of that's my salary. I love it. <laughs> you deserve to know what's happening with yeah, half of your do. money. Yeah, I, got, uh, I get free healthcare. I get free, free, education. Free, free education. Don't forget, you can do a master in Denmark. You don't pay a tuition fee. No, you get a salary as a student. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, get you get paid to go to school. Exactly. And President Duterte just uh, declared that the uh, state universities should be tuition fee, mm -hmm. moving in the right direction. We are not in, in, uh, on the same page when it comes to the way of uh, dealing with uh, war on drugs. 
But it's a big uh, problem here. Okay. It has to be dealt with, one way or the other. It's the police uh, efforts, it's the health efforts, it's the education efforts. It's, uh, I mean, and, and you have the same problem in many countries. So we are trying to, to broaden the whole uh, discourse and the whole dialogue to discuss uh, all the things, the, the complex reality as it is. I'm glad that you shared this unique perspective because um, it's important to hear something different. But we have to leave it at that. I enjoyed the meal. It was delicious. I, I scarfed down three of them. It was so good. Thank you again for inviting us to your home and learning more about Danish culture and all the great work that you're doing. And looking forward to what else you work on, especially the book. And you too can learn more about Danish culture and the other Scandinavian countries. If you're in the mood for a Nordic style Christmas, the Nordcham Family Christmas Fest takes place on December 3rd at Enderen College in Fort Bonifacio Tagig. You can expect plenty of traditional food, some of the stuff I tried, uh, Nordic wine known as glug and gingerbread cookies. And there's the glug right there. Plus activities for the kids and for the adults, free flowing beer. You saw us drinking Carlsberg there if you recognize. Uh, of course, a visit with St. Nicholas, which is, you know, a uh, Scandinavian figure, of course.